We, we have a quorum tonight, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. Um, uh, I expect one more member to show up, but we're going to proceed without that individual for a moment. Uh, we'll start with introductions. Uh, starting on my left is the Zoning Administrator. Uh, Tom Badowski, Zoning Administrator. And I'm Bob Wardick, I'm the Chair. I'm Carla Nuisel, Vice Chair. Shane Miscell. And um, we have two applications tonight. Um, they're both. In this one. Uh, those interested in the first application was the application by Nancy Carpenter and Karen Grace. Anyone else interested in that party? James Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, just want to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, the matter before this board tonight? I do. I do. Okay. You raised your hand. You are? Yes, I, 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 I got you. <laughs> Thought that's what we were. <laughs> um, so, uh, I reckon you reflect that uh, uh, Matthew was also sworn in. Um, and, okay, so um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and give us an overview of what you're proposing to do here. Okay, I'm James Colcher. I'm a busy business partner with Nancy Carpenter and Karen Grace. And uh, so what we're proposing to do is... Yeah, I think you're going to have to speak up. Last time, we're recording this, and... No, no, um, he's okay. 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 So what we're here to do is we're here to uh, do a boundary adjustment. We've sold uh, Matt and Muriel Morris a, a parcel of land that's 19.1 acres with a barn with a garage, and uh, we d we felt that uh, that uh, it would be, you know, better for all of us if we just sold them all the the actual lower field that's in in flood and everything because he's 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 a farmer. He likes to develop and things like that. We've agreed on a deal. We've already closed on the first portion of the land, the 19.1 acres with the barn and the garage. The other piece we needed to do a boundary adjustment to, which is which is right here. So right now we have the two acres, which is the house, the old herring house. Then the 19.1 is the one just behind it, written, written in orange or red. And then the uh, you know the whole third part of the subdivision was this this you know the remainder of the land, which was 27.6 acres, I believe. So what we're trying to do now is on this page, we're trying to do a boundary adjustment where where we're going to build, put a line just on the bottom side of the knoll that's across from the winery. It's going to uh, give like it's another 14.6 acres, I believe it is, and add that to the land that we've already sold to Matt and Muriel Morris, Morris, and uh, so that they can farm it and keep it looking beautiful. Is that boundary line that you're proposing? Is that on you? Previously, you came here and you created three lots. Yeah, four lots. Four lot, four lots for. For, for basically for sale, yep. uh, development and sale. Yep. Is that one of the boundary lines for that lot? It is now. It's actually the last boundary it's line. It's the last boundary line. So yep. that would follow that boundary. Yeah, it follows okay. the boundary line essentially. It follows the, the whole the whole the whole end of that those lots, which is lot <coughs> three, four, five, and six. So they won't exist. No, lots three, four, five, and six still exist. They're on oh, the knoll here. On the other side. Yeah, oh, they're, they're yeah, over here. Sorry. This will just exist now as you know the floodplain. Oh, okay. It will be hooked to the remainder of the 19 acres that he's already purchased from us, which is part of the barn and all the agricultural that's already been going on there. And the home that's in front, the old uh, you know hearing house, is still you know for sale in his own two-acre lot. That's interesting. Yep. Okay, uh, and um, uh, anything further? I think that's it. We're just hoping that it goes through and, and Matt can start enjoying his land and doing some hay and keeping it beautiful. I'm not sure what else we need to do. Well, he's done a nice job cleaning it he up. He has. Um, this is Zoning Administrator. Do you have any comments? With you just, just two. Uh, uh, if this comes to fruition, uh, both lots continue to be uh, meet the zoning regulations for lot size and that, so it does not create a non-conforming lot on either one of these. James mentioned some acreages that's different than is on his application here. I thought you said 14 point something in. Well, things have, things have changed. Our, our surveyor, you know, and you know who that is, Rick, he's, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what happened, you know, so he gave us one numbers and then when we, when we sold the land, we had to come do an administrative adjustment is, is my understanding. Right, uh, you know, because he had, there was, there was actually a, This is the application you gave for this project. Right, right. So is it? 15.35 acres? Well, it must be 15.35 if that's what I put on it, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's that what it says that. in the picture. That's the long-term effects of the 80s. So I'm trying to get through that, but I'm, that's that should be what it is. 
So 15.35 acres is what's being transferred. Transferred by over on, on the boundary, boundary line adjustment, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, so that will be contiguous to the other acreage which you've already sold. Mr. Yes. Morris. So, yes, it is. 15.35 is right here on the mylar. And then 19. Yeah, and then 19, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, my numbers. I'm sorry. Anything else, else Tom? No. Questions by members of the board? No. Nope. Okay. Well, our um, <coughs> findings are dictated by. Uh, definitions in both the subdivision regulations and in the um, zoning regulations, uh, boundary line adjustment um, will have no significant impact on roads. Will this have any impact on roads? No. Rights of ways? No. Or other public facilities? And then the other thing we must find is that the boundary adjustment Shall not result in the creation of a non-conforming lot, and you already testified that all lots will be conforming after the correct. And no new lot is being created. We're correct. simply moving a line from one place to the other. Those are the litmus tests we have to go through. Um, questions by board members? Oh. I take that. Oh. No, I said no. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I thought we were pending a, a major breakthrough here. No. <laughs> I thought maybe that was a motion. I thought maybe that was a motion. Was that a motion? I thought maybe it was a motion. No. Well, if there are no further comments or questions, um, did you have any questions or comments, Mr. Morse? No, I think it's all been covered. Okay, um, so I'll move that we close application. 18-053. Second. Motion been made and seconded. <coughs> um, is there any discussion on that motion? Nope. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, also will aye. Opposed? Uh, and this motion is carried. The hearing is closed. As in previous cases, you'll we'll issue our findings and after we go through the room session. And, uh, see them sometime in the near future, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We, we well, there's so. a statutory right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. Right. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Have a great evening. Stay positive. <laughs> no, I don't think so. They're here. Thank you. You too. Are you guys here at Bartlett Hill? Yes. You want to come up? Susan? Yep. Yeah. Could you ask you to introduce yourselves, please? Yep. I'm Susan Law, um, and I own 44 acres off of Bartlett Hill. And I'm Stephen Deal, and I just purchased 2.1 acres off Bartlett Hill. Oh, I'm trying to figure out why Sandy wasn't So, so Sandy is coming. Oh. She yeah. thought she was going to be late, and she says if she's going to be late, that both of these individuals can speak on her behalf. Okay. Well, uh, in the interest of moving along then, um, why don't you explain to the board? Um, oh, let me swear you in, please. <laughs> swear to tell the truth. Please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth. Let the truth and matter before this board tonight under penalties of perjury. I do. I do. Thank you. So. Um, as in the case of the last application, why don't you explain to us what you're doing and why you're doing it, and so we understand. All right, so um, I guess you have the, the map here. Um, originally, uh, when Sandy had the lines drawn up, she didn't know who the neighbors were going to be and if they would be comfortable sharing a driveway. So. She um, added a, a strip of, of land that could potentially be used as another driveway if somebody chose to do that. Um, when Steve and I met each other, uh, we decided we were completely fine sharing uh, the driveway that's already existing. Um, and also we realized that 
the land, the way it was divided, wasn't really going to be able to be used by either of us for much of anything because we each had a little, I had a little triangle and he had a strip. Um, and with the project that uh, he was hoping to do on his lot, uh, it made more sense if, if I could give him uh, a little bit of my land and in return for um, the land up front, the strip that he couldn't do much with other than put in a driveway. So um, we uh, agreed to basically do a, a land swap. Stephen, you own which lot? Lot number seven. Lot seven, okay. The stuff that's in the yellow. Oh, yeah. 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 Lot number seven, which currently includes that strip down to um, Bartlett Road. Correct. Okay. Um, Tom, any comments? Uh, a, a couple comments. When and I've <clears throat> got some resolution to my comments. The the strip uh, down on Bartlett Road was really the the access to um, potentially to to the lot number seven, and this would have taken uh, it away. And uh, and so subsequent to the last hearing, folks have bought uh, these lots and have now are trying to get. E911 addresses, and so there will be three lots sharing off of this this driveway. Once it's three lots, the uh, E911 requires it to be its own separate named road. So uh, uh, Susan petitioned the select board to uh, name the road, and the select board said, "Well, it has to be a uh, it'll be a private road," uh, and um, so the, this road was built four or five years ago. I got a, a and the concern that select board had was it was it constructed to town standards. Um, I got a, a, a letter today from Ray Washburn, third estimator and project manager for Dupois Construction, who did the work. And um, you know, just a quote or a, a piece of this: In my opinion, the private road meets or exceeds town sta town standards. There are two culverts installed that were more extra precautions than actual storm drains. Um, so I believe the road uh, will meet, uh, uh, the, the select board will ag agree to naming that road and making it a private road. So that was the concern I had about losing that strip. So I think that goes away today because of, of this letter. Um, uh, and so, uh, the other item that the select board asked the, these parties to consider was a road maintenance agreement as part of a, this naming of a town road. My understanding from Sandy, and, and I would ask the chair to maybe confirm with the, with the, the owners, is that there's language that effect in their deeds, so a, a separate standalone um, uh, road maintenance agreement is, would not be needed. Um, so I think though if those two cases are, are in, in effect true the, the road is, has been certified as constructed to town standards and that there is some sort of maintenance agreement by the three parties I, I do not believe the select board will have any issue granting this private road status so what's being driven what's driving this is the 911 Correct. requirement for a private road for a road name Select board says the road name is going to be a private road. Correct. Um, it serve, would serve three lots. Correct. Uh, it would serve Susan's lot. It would serve um, uh, Stephen's lot. And it would serve is Sandy Storm's lot here. No. Um, so it's sold. I don't know who to list. It's been sold, sold, but okay, that's oh, sold. Oh, Carson. Yes. <laughs> According to the map. Well, was sure if that's oh. current or not. That is. Yeah. <coughs> that is current. It's not mm -hmm. Sandy's list. I'm asking. Um, so okay. So yeah. I, I would just maybe just our right, subdivision will allow three lots to be served by one drive. Is that correct? Correct. Do you remember yep, that correctly? It does. Yep. Um, I would just like to if 
that these folks would confirm that there is that language in the deeds. I haven't seen it. I've asked for that, but I have not seen that. Um, so if if nothing else, uh, if, the, if the board uh, decides to approve this in deliberate session, that that would be a condition that that has to be satisfied, that there has to be proof that there is some sort of maintenance agreement established. So, just, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So you say there is there language is, to that effect um, in your deeds? Yeah, well, when we uh, when I signed um, all the paperwork, that was one of the big things that I wanted in place because um, that uh, I'm giving an easement on my land, and I had concerns about whether or not I would be stuck with the maintenance. So um, I made sure that uh, my attorney put that language. In and yes, um, Steve's also. I just got it today, actually. So I do have something actually in writing. Is it specific or does it say shared maintenance? No, it, it's well, shared maintenance, but it, it is pretty does specific. It, percentage it, it talks about, um, yeah, that it has to be equally divided okay, and otherwise it has a, a, a okay. pretty specific plan in place. Okay, does it make provisions for, um, uh, payment in the event that one party refuses to pay their third? I, I forget if it I goes into so. the payment specifics. Um, I got it out in the car. You have it in the car? Want me to go grab it or was it? That, do you want him to grab it now? Uh, well, it just, it just an agreement doesn't mean much unless there's some kind of backup to it. In other words, you can agree to split it three ways, but if one party doesn't pay. I, it was pretty specific, but um, I, I haven't looked at it in a few months. Uh, I mean, he has it with him. If you have that with him, I, I'd like to see that entered into the... And I don't uh, know if yours has the same language that... I can run out and okay. see it really quick. We appreciate that. And I'm not sure that they would go into collection specifics, because that, that's sort of a legal issue after the fact, I think. But as long as it spells out how it's supposed to be, it gives them the right to go to court yeah. to get the yeah. money. Yeah. So, Or you can put a lien on them. Yeah, and it may be going beyond what we yeah. have full responsibility. Mm -hmm. On their deed, if it's on their deed, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm talking off the top of my head, but. The mechanism isn't. It's like a mechanics thing? I don't know. I'm just thinking that if you're, if it's related to the land, and you. Anyway, in any case, you can go to court. And yeah, I, and I would just <coughs> recommend to this board that a condition of any permits would be that they supply those to us. Um, and the third party has the same provisions? Uh, yeah, no, uh, there, there are different sections of that driveway, so um, I would not be involved in, involved in Paul's portion way up top yeah. where but, I don't but, drive but, the, but the people up on top have a responsibility they do because um, both Steve and Paul uh, have been given an easement on my yeah. land so the three of us will um, share in the maintenance of that section uh, okay I just think we have that after the evidence and then when we go to deliberate we can decide yeah. whether or not satisfies our requirements and, okay and in, in that in, I, I really this is what the select board is saying my, my my feeling is 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 our condition will be based off on the select board approving the private road mm -hmm. um, if we did that it's really for the select board to decide whether or not the conditions satisfy them or not we've always shared the same concern we've always told applicants who are sharing a road you really ought to have an agreement yep uh, an enforceable agreement that's, that spells out who's doing <coughs> it on the road. It doesn't mean you have to share it, it's just yeah. you've got to sp be spelled out who's doing it and who's going to be economically responsible for it. And attached to the deed. Pardon? And attached to the deed for the next time. Yes, they attach to the deed. So I think you, I think it sounds to me like you've taken the right steps and, um, uh, and a condition of, of the permit would be that 
this be approved as a private road by the select board. Whatever the select board requires really is up to the select board, in my opinion. So um, that's this is, is uh, I would say, pretty specific in, um, in the, the plan for the maintenance payment. Um, and it gets into quite a bit of, of detail about what maintenance looks like. So, um, it's page two, Carl. Yeah, I'm reading right now. Does it only reference your two lots? Uh, one, six, one, six, six and seven. seven. Okay. Okay. One, six, and seven, okay. We can review that for the later session. Um, anybody want to hear more about this? Um, I have you're one. reading it, I don't want to stop you here. No, no, that's fine. I, yeah, we can talk about it after. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think, it's, it's I think uh, from my perspective, perspective it, the bylaws only, the only bylaws only speak to the number of lots that can be off of a drive. Um, the bylaws even don't even say it's a private road. If it's three, we can be a right of way under our bylaws without being a private road. The reason it's being driven by private road is 911 and the select board and private road, and that's a little bit beyond us. Uh, but certainly, I think what the select board has shared with you is, is, is a valid concern. Um, I would tell you this from my perspective the only condition we would pose is that you have to get select board approval uh, for a private road. Um, and so um, I guess what we need to do is see whether or not you satisfy all the other provisions mm -hmm. of boundary line adjustment because that's what your application is for. Yep. Can I and ask a question before we get into Oh, that? please, go ahead. I'm just curious on the actual boundary line. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why that small point goes across the road? Uh, yeah. Um, it was going to end up being this weird little triangle in the middle of the driveway that would then. Um, Does it have to have part of the road in it? Is it it well it was it was going to and yes um, part of that goes back to the easement and what we all agreed to and uh, by doing that it basically makes it so that the three of us are sharing the lower part, um, Steve and Paul are dealing with that section above me, um, and then Paul has his his own section. Uh, so it, instead of having to go back and rewrite the language and, and get me involved um, in a section that is above where I'll be driving, we decided to uh, bring it down to that point and also just to make it uh, cleaner. Do you have anything to add to that? Did that answer no. your question, yeah, absolutely right. They're actually eliminating that little triangle now. I mean, they're going to take no, that part. So no, this part that's right here. Highlighted, no. Yeah, we're going to, I still got our this. own part of the road. That's, yeah. that's what I was getting yes, at. Yes, that part right there. It, you know, typically somebody would stop it here, but that's why I was wondering why so the road had to So I have still shared the road that because I'm already question. using it. Oh, okay, I see what you yeah. 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 But the, there's, this, the way I understand, this sliver here is moving to this area here. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's, that's the swap. Yeah. So this right, the part might, be, might be colored here. different. This is from here, it's going to here. <laughs> Now, um, wait, no, go ahead. No, this is going to this, no. and this is going to here. No, this oh. right here would actually be if this wasn't yellow. So, the yellow, this yellow is moving where this yellow is. So, because this oh. was the ply right here of that one, so, so we okay. move this one up to here. He had this weird little strip yeah. of land that you couldn't really this right here no the, in the, the yellow Shane, you are correct this is going to her lot yes yeah and this is coming to your yes lot. yeah yes right yeah yeah uh, yeah i guess I, yeah. Yeah. yeah um i guess i'm a little confused as to uh 
how the the 911 address is connected to the land swap like how how do those the elimination of the road the second road access there yes because now that that other access won't be okay because sandy had been told um when she did that that she did not need to leave that because you have we allow three the, yeah and you have the easement um you can't can't just block someone from their land and so um, that was her doing because she didn't want potentially feuding right neighbors if they didn't know each other decided they wanted their own to put in their own driveway that was the only reason for having that strip but at the time she was told that's unnecessary and it's kind of a weird Thing to do like the shape it, is very was, odd from our perspective it was unnecessary Obviously, yeah from the state's perspective when there's three lots on the at easement that's a different story so that's the state requirement versus the town requirement yeah i, I believe this board didn't know we if she was gonna she, she was gonna keep ownership of that prop those, uh -huh. those other lots um so now the ownership has changed and there are going to be houses off of this mm -hmm. potentially private road e911 uh, takes precedent over. okay yeah because that was a logging road right? that's a logging road yeah. yes the um yeah just going back to where we are i mean the e911 is, is a requirement not of this board mm -hmm. um and the select board's requirement that it be if you put a name on the road, it has to be private road. That's all, frankly, not part of our bylaws. And I, I guess I understand that part. It's just I'm confused why this random strip that is not a road, uh, why we have, or why that's connected to the, um, to the, the getting a 911 address or why. And, and I don't understand that because I don't understand 911. I don't understand why you can't make uh, a decision on the, the land swap uh, separate from the 911 address issue. Yeah, we they can. Will. Okay. I, I, think we, I, I, I think we can. Okay. Um, but for you to get for you to get to satisfy us, you, you, you need to satisfy the select board. The okay. select board needs to satisfy you. So Got it. it. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's, Got it's, it. it's become convoluted, which should be, I mean, all, bylaws, all our bylaws say in terms of that access is it can serve no more than three lots. Okay. That's the only restriction we have. Uh, we do speak in terms of the widths and, and the size of that, all that, but we don't require it to be a private road. That's, that's beyond, I think it's a good idea personally, but we, that's not a requirement of our bylaw. Okay. I think I'm speaking correctly. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I just say the only thing that really in our bylaws is uh, the provisions I read earlier on the yep. previous application, which is we must find that, um, uh, I lost it already. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's right here. Um, that it um, creates no new building lots. Um, that will have no impact on roads. And I believe it will improve the road. But. Yeah. Um, have no impact on rights of ways. In fact, it's, it's relying on an existing right of way or any other public facility. And I think we'll, you know, I, I don't see that it'll have any impact on building lot. I mean, we'll not create a new lot. We'll not. We're just moving a line. We'll have no impact on roads. We'll have no impact on right of ways. And by the same token, um, Shall not result, result in not in a non-conforming lot, which is really important. That we by moving this line, we haven't made a lot non-conforming. We have not. That's your testimony, Tom, right? That's correct. It's, it's an equal property swap. There's no yeah. net gain or loss. So um, I think I'm, I, I'm a little torn on how to handle the 911 select board thing. <laughs> Is, it's really not a part of this bylaw. Um, I'm not, but I think we can, I think it's pretty simple that, that 
uh, <coughs> these folks give us this language in, the, in each of those two deeds, that will satisfy the select board, uh, I believe so, and this letter will satisfy the select board. So that'll take care of the select board, but that's really not a part of our problem, with all due respect. So I think we work hand in glove as a community here. Uh, <laughs> I didn't Chair. suggest that. It was otherwise. Uh, I'm just trying to stay straight within our bylaws. Um, it seemed to me that we're making the decision on the boundary line adjustment, correct. not what to do with it, not whether it's going to become a private road or not. We are, but we're eliminating. You're the eliminating of the access, access to that's, that lot. That's if correct. They, the private road doesn't exist. That's if correct. The so if there can't be allowed, granted a private road, then the, there's no then, access to the lot. Then you can't allow the boundary line adjustment. That's kind of where I'm at, but that's, so that's you, my opinion. It does need to go. Well, I mean, it's just conditional. So on it would be a conditional the, upon select board approval of the town road. But it strikes me that the applicants have met that requirement. They have got it right. Provide testimony that the, meets the private road standards, and uh, it, it it would be my recommendation, assuming that I get this language, that the select board approves the, this private road. So our approval would be contingent on their approval. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we could make a decision. Yes. Right. Are there any other questions with regard to the boundary line adjustment, other than the access, which we I think we beat to death? <laughs> I have not. Do you have any further comments you wanted to make? <laughs> Tommy, further? Nope. Welcome to Berlin. What? Welcome to Berlin. Steve's <laughs> <laughs> from Berlin. Right. Uh, in that case, I entertain a motion to approve this application. To, uh, to close? To close the closing <laughs> area. Not approve the application. <laughs> Thank you. I'll move to uh, close application 18-054. Oh, thank you for that clarification. Uh, second. second. Um, discussion? Okay. All in favor of that motion, please favor by saying aye. 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 And we have approved closing this hearing, <laughs> not, the motion, not, the, not the application. <laughs> Can you get your language in? Yep. Okay. Yep. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Tom, did you get this? Copy? No. Yeah. Let me take it. Do you want copies? Steve, did you want that back? You made copies. I made a copy. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you guys got copies. All right. All right. I'd like, Thank you. I'd like to see a copy of that, I'll Tom, out of curiosity. Text Sandy and tell her not to rush <laughs> yeah, don't back from yeah, me. Right. Yeah, yeah and I, th I, think, I think Christy needs a copy of that just so she can sign it. How long does it usually take? Uh, Upwards to 45 days. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks. You. Hi, Josh. Am I next? <laughs> I'm very glad that there's a quorum here without me. I was at another meeting and all of a sudden I went longer than I thought and I looked at my watch and said, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to be up in town of Berlin. Pretty easy lift tonight. Yeah. Very, very I see. Good. And we're done. Almost done. Um, while Tom is copying that for us. Um, we have minutes of our last meeting, which I've already misplaced. Let's go find it. with regard to the minutes of the meeting of September 4th. I do not. I do, I do, and I've already shared these with uh, Christy, um, but basically um, clarification that the uh, 
area that we were talking about, which is on Route 12, is zoned commercial. It's not zoned yep. industrial. Um, and that the uh, discussion with regard to setbacks could be greatly simplified by just saying that's, that there's an existing building and there's no change in setbacks. Um, and there were a couple of other editorial things. I, I think you, was, did you understand what I said to you, Christy? Um, I believe so. I don't think I have okay. I'm trying to remember what um, uh, In other words, that, that there's no plan to add two existing, add any additional lighting. Uh, this is going to be existing. Uh, just so I, I add the word two. And that um, municipal service is no impact, and I just I struck because it's a state highway. It's really, it was broader than that. There were no municipal impacts based on the testimony by Tom. Um, and those, those one, two, three, four changes. Edits, they really edits more than anything else. Um, so I'd like to move to amend the draft minutes with those edits. Second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 as amended. <laughs> um, so, um, I, what other ge general item, did everyone get a notice on the fall planning and zoning form? Um, I don't think I did. Was it recently? Yeah. Did um, we get an email? It's scheduled for October 10th. Well, that's the deadline. October 20th, I think, is the 20th. The, the deadline for registration is the 10th. It's on October 17th. 17th, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, Local regulation of working farms, planning for vibrant and If you didn't get it, I'll just. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll be in southern New Hampshire all that week. So signs. What? Signs. Yes. Maybe I should go to this. They're always, they're always, they're pretty good talks. Mm -hmm. um, Signs, signs, everywhere signs. Here's your sign. <laughs> do, you me, do you want me to make a copy of that for the board members so they could take it with them? Sure. Um, or or I'll, I'll scan it and send it to everybody, one or the other. I, well, I guess I'm assuming everybody's getting this stuff. I actually had copies of these for everybody, um, and but somebody threw them away here at this office. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dana, how could you do that? <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. No. Um, that came from the league, right? Yeah. Are you guys on the league's mailing list? I don't think so. Uh, it really so. should be. Some good stuff comes from them. Their newsletters, of course, are very interesting. Uh, because every newsletter they have usually has an opinion, uh, legal opinion on provisions of zoning or bylaws. and um, So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty useful document. You can you know, skip through it and see what's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's typically more written for town administrators than it is for zoning, but it's very much relevant to zoning and planning. You might just go to their... Go to their website and register. Right. You just go to their website and register. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The town will pay for it. There's no cost to be on their website. I mean, no. But no I mean, for this we'll pay for the participation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We do have money in the budget to attend some of these. I do not plan on attending it. Neither do I. I might think about it. Because I'll be in Colorado. I'll be further away. Really? Kentucky? Again? I wish I could travel as much as I can. So, uh, that's all I had. Anybody have any other matters of business for the board tonight? I entertain a motion then to go into the little reception. So